Well, today's the day. Today, I finally tie the knot. And to celebrate, we're going to make a wedding sip. We'll also look at some of the world's more interesting wedding traditions. This time on Drinking History. Now, since I have all the toasters and deep fat fryers, I have three that I need, the best wedding gift that I could possibly ask for is for you to like and subscribe to Tasting History, like this video, and share it. Share the gift of Tasting History with your friends and family. Now, in the 19th century, the thing to have at your wedding was a big bowl of wedding punch. But what happens if you have no friends or, you know, it's just a couple or maybe four of you at the wedding? Well, in 1900, in the 20th Century Guide by James C. Maloney, he gives you the option to make a wedding sip, which is what we're making today. Perfect if you are having just two or maybe four people at your wedding, pre-portioned, just like the meals from our sponsor, HelloFresh. See, one of my favorite things about getting food from HelloFresh is that it is all pre-portioned for me. You don't have to measure things out. You know exactly how much food you're going to get. And so, since there are only two of us, they send us two meals. There's no waste, so I'm not buying extra ingredients. They also saved me from going to the grocery store, which you'd think running a food channel I would enjoy, but I don't. I love the fact that they just portion everything out, send it to me, have it at my doorstep, and it only takes about 30 minutes to prepare. They also have a large and ever-changing selection of foods to choose from so you never get bored. And right now they even have some autumnal goodies like pumpkin cinnamon rolls. Last night as a pre-wedding dinner, we made the chicken sausage spaghetti bolognese with fresh zucchini and Parmesan cheese. There was almost no prep time, it took 30 minutes to make, and I ended up with a wonderful bowl of pasta. Look how happy I am. So go to HelloFresh.com and use code TASTINGHISTORY14 to get 14 free meals plus free shipping. That's 14 free meals by going to HelloFresh.com and using my code TASTINGHISTORY14. Now let's get sippin', cause, cause it's called a wedding sip. First you'll need a mixing glass with some ice and then one teaspoon of one-to-one -one simple syrup. You can also just use sugar. Then one teaspoon of pineapple syrup. I am using Small Hands Foods pineapple gum syrup, and that gum is going to give you an extra smoothness to the drink. Then a teaspoon of lemon juice. Now for the liquors, he mentions everything in wine glasses and pony glasses, which can be quite confusing because they weren't actually entirely standard. But typically, a wine glass is two ounces or a large jigger, and a pony glass was one ounce. So he actually calls for half wine glass, so one jigger or, or one ounce rather, uh, and a half pony glass or a half an ounce. So I'm going to pour one ounce of port wine. It's called Taylor Fladgate. It's very good. It's not like top drawer, but you don't want to use anything that's too top drawer because you're going to be mixing this with a lot of other things. So don't go break the bank on this. Um, this is this is very reasonable. Then we're going to do an ounce of Catawba wine. Now, most people, including myself until very recently, had never even heard of Catawba wine. And that's odd because it used to be the most planted wine grape in America throughout most of the 19th century. It's really, really hard to find today. There are only a handful of wineries that still use it, but Stonehill Winery, which is located in Missouri, has actually been making Catawba wine for over a century. And when this recipe was written, they were the number two wine producer in the country. So I'll put a link in the description to where you can get this if you wanna try it out. So I'm going to add an ounce, but then I'm also going to um, drink a little bit myself just to see what it's like, you know? Cheers. Well, that is just refreshing as all get out. This is really, this is a summer wine if ever I found one. You know, I thought it was going to be very sweet. It's not. And they used to call this wine dry Catawba. Um, dry meant something quite different then. Dry was actually much sweeter than it is today, uh, which is why now we have like extra dry champagne and everything like that. It's not super sweet. I mean, it's not like a white Zinfandel. It's much, it's just smooth. It's wonderful. Yeah, I could, I could drink a glass of that. Now he also calls for a half pony glass, which is going to be about a half ounce of Jamaica rum and abricotine 
mixed. I don't know why he didn't just say a quarter of each, but that's how he wrote it. And for the Jamaica rum, I am using Smith & Cross, which is a wonderful navy strength rum. It's absolutely fantastic. It has like, it's really complex. It's got some bite to it because it is navy strength. So it's very, very alcoholic. Uh, we'll actually do a whole episode on what navy strength actually means and where it came from. Um, but it has like these wonderful dark kind of leathery notes to it that I really, really love. So we'll pour a quarter of an ounce of that. And abricotine. Abricotine at this time was a, a aperitif made in Switzerland, and basically it was apricot brandy. Hard to find that exact thing now. Um, so you can get apricot brandy um, here in the US, right here. And I'll put a link to both of these uh, in the description as well from Curiata. They sell all sorts of wonderful liquors that sometimes are kind of hard to find in your average liquor store, but they deliver to most of the country. They're fantastic. So we'll add that. Then stir it up and then add a few berries. And then we'll strain this puppy into a glass. And it calls for you to top it off with just a bit of seltzer. And here we are, the wedding sip. Let's give it a shot. That's the weirdest tasting thing I've ever... That is a weird cocktail. It's not bad. It's just really weird. And I thought it would be weird because what an odd assortment of ingredients we've put into this glass. I, the only thing I can like really pick out is the pineapple syrup. I can tell that that is there. Everything else is pretty well blended, I guess. It has a steeliness to it that is super, super clean. It just like cuts into your palate. It's not sweet. I thought it would be sweeter than it is. It's not sweet. It's not very, it doesn't feel alcoholic. Honestly, this is a very, very dangerous cocktail because there is nothing in there that would make me even think that there was alcohol in this. So let's raise a toast, not to my wedding at this point, but to the weird wedding traditions of the world. So the number one weird wedding tradition is crying before weddings in China. During the Warring States period, the princess of the Xiao state was wed to the leader of the Yan state. And it's said that the princess's mother was so distraught at her daughter leaving that she wept at her feet. And that makes sense, but traditions do as traditions do, and this one evolved quite a bit. So that today, the Tuja people often start with the bride crying, weeping for an hour a day, a full month before her wedding day. Now, a week into that, the mother will join her in weeping, and then a week after that, the grandmother, and finally, the sisters and aunts and all of the women of the family spend an hour weeping uh, on, on the way leading up to her wedding. And I'm not going to lie, I'm pretty sure that my mom has been doing this for the past few weeks. Number two is called the blackening of the bride. See, in parts of Scotland, mostly rural Scotland, the bride and groom are playfully kidnapped by friends and family and covered with things to make them disgusting. It could be molasses or rotten eggs, fish guts or curdled milk. In the 19th century, it was often the soot from chimneys, and there are even stories of people using tar. Now, this was supposed to finish up with all the friends and family then washing the bride and groom, and it actually probably started just with washing, uh, a, a washing of the feet. But at some point, someone said, well, your feet actually aren't that dirty, so let me go get some fish guts. Number three is back to China with the shooting of the bride. See, the Uyghur people will often celebrate by having the bride get shot with arrows by the new husband three times. Luckily, the arrows do not have arrow heads on them, so it's probably just more annoying than actually painful, but still interesting. So he shoots three arrows, then goes and picks them up, breaks them and the bow, and this is supposed to symbolize a long-lasting marriage. Number four is bridesmaids and the best man. And I, I can hear you right now. Well, that's not weird at all. I had bridesmaids or I had a best man at my wedding. And no, it's not weird until you realize why they're supposed to be there. 
See, bridesmaids were originally dressed exactly like the bride and used basically as decoys, either to fool malevolent spirits or, more practically, robbers. Because the bride would often actually carry the dowry, or like a bunch of money, with her to the wedding and exchange it uh, during part of the ceremony. And then when it comes to the best man, he was supposed to be the best man with a sword because he was there to guard the ceremony to make sure that it didn't get disrupted and to stop the bride from running off if, you know, she wasn't that into it. This guard duty then often extended to the actual wedding night. And my brother, who's gonna be my best man, has been practicing his sword skills, so I'm getting a little worried. And number five is La Soupe from France, and this is definitely the most disgusting one. At some French weddings, the guests would get together at the end of the evening and pool all of their leftovers into la soupe, and then feed it to the happy couple in a toilet, or older, in a chamber pot. And more recently, they've, they've removed the leftovers and started using chocolate and champagne, but they're sticking with the toilet concept, so that's weird. And I hate that that's now what's going to be in my mind as I finish my wedding sip. Oh well. So thank you again for watching. Wish me luck at my wedding later today, or if you're watching this later than a few days ago, or whenever you're watching it. And I will see you next time on Drinking History. Hmm.